Let us pray. Oh, gracious Father, once again, Father, we come thanking you for giving us another day. Father, we're just so merciful and thankful for, for being able to see our family doing well and everybody on the sound of my voice. Father, we ask you to touch each and every one that's here tonight, Father. Help us to understand your ways, Father, not ours. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just ask you to give us understanding how to direct our business for the time, Father. We ask you to just touch each and every one that they might be able to be celebrating what's, what's done. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Honorable Lord. Well, Roll call, Michael Adams, here. Frank Boyd, Martin Warren, here. Eddie Jones, here. James Harrell, here. Next on the agenda is Business of Business. Ms. Allison Warren is not here. Um, Ms. Zena Peoples here.
We submitted a pre-treatment permit application to the Mississippi Department of Environmental Quality. Uh, they have uh, not reviewed it in totality, but they've given us kind of some preliminary feedback that uh, they have no issue with the ability of the lagoons to treat. They do uh, request additional information about the type of agreement that the city would use with the industry in order to uh, assign the appropriate responsibility of who's responsible for the, the two smaller lagoons. And um, Mr. Arnold has put up a uh, satellite image of your uh, public treatment facility, and it's the, the two square-shaped lagoons to the southeast. Uh, so I think what DEQ is wanting to be assured of is who's responsible for the lagoons going forward, given that the, uh, the permitted discharge would be what's coming out of those small lagoons into the, the larger lagoon that's operated by the city. So that would be uh, our intent is to, to kind of be, begin negotiations of, of who's responsible for what uh, in terms of upkeep of the mechanical portions of the slopes, uh, operation of the, the aerators, and, uh, and making sure that process control data is used to, to ensure that the permit that DEQ would issue as a result of the application, that that permit is, uh, that Gold Coast is in compliance with that pre-treatment permit at all times. So, if you've got any questions for me, and, uh, and you're a consulting engineer, I think. Mr. Yes, okay, so. Um, and Tom, This is Mr. Douglas, the shooter right here. Yes. Okay. And, and uh, Hunter, do you mind also elaborating a little bit for the board? And if the board has any questions or discussions, they'll be able to present them now. Sure. I'll, I'll be happy to answer any questions there are. Uh, I have reviewed uh, no notice from Clearwater County up here. We'll a copy of the draft pre trip permit. And I did speak with uh, Tracy Tompkins at DEQ today. She verified she had received it and was reviewing it. And she let me know some of her comments that, uh, that they thought they were coming forward with when they uh, completed their review. Uh, they'd like to see a five year agreement because the length of the spring term is five years. Uh, they'd like to see the lease agreement and to know the full details of the uh, arrangement between the town and Gilman. Uh, 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 I'll be glad to answer any questions if there are any. And if the board decides that this is what they want, the five year agreement, you guys agree to that? Yes, Frank. We would we, we like a long term agreement. And what about the amount that was previously discussed? It'll be kind of good. We had. Uh, we have looked on your behalf at the, the strength of the wastewater coming in, the loading that it is, uh, what the market value of that is, and it's around $9,000 a month if you use uh, the, uh, the reasonably full measure of what they expect to be bringing on the site. Uh, I think uh, they were thinking something uh, lower than that, so there's a Negotiation that will need to take place. Do you have any questions? Yeah, man, I ask the police that, so to speak, to make sure everything goes right. What we have in Manpower, what we guys be open in conjunction with our employees and making sure everything goes right. Well, you guys assume full responsibility for those two lagoons if they decide to allow you to lease those lagoons. Are you going to be responsible for those? Is the question. That is what we would recommend, yes. If Gold Coast is going to be subject to the authority of MDEQ anywhere prior to that discharge point, so anything that goes on in those two small lagoons, any enforcement action that would be taken by you as a result of anything that they need to be non compliance will be taken by the EQ upon Gold Coast. So it makes sense that Gold Coast is responsible for the operation, the maintenance of those lagoons and uh, 
the sampling that's needed to, to see how they're operating on a weekend, week out basis. At any time, it would be uh, welcome for the city to uh, duplicate any samples, to take their own samples out of the lagoons or out of the effluent. They're on city property, and you obviously have uh, easy enough access to those lagoons. So uh, at any time, you, you'd be able to collect samples from any point in the system that you wish to verify the information that we are producing is accurate. What do you think about this? What's your proposal? Well, uh, those two lagoons are out there idle right now, so they're a resource that's going unused right now. Uh, so it's an opportunity for the city to make full use of the facility out there and serve a commercial purpose. Uh, it would be a source of revenue to the city. Uh, so that's the plus side. The, the minus side, it was, it was, uh, a little bit of a risk for the city to take it on. It's a control risk and one that you can look at and examine. And uh, I think it's uh, it's good that we'll have DEQ issuing a permit that is enforceable and that requires compliance. There'll be outs in the contract uh, for both parties, uh, I presume, and uh, performance measures in the contract. So it will be an increased load going into your publicly owned treatment works that follows it. So that's something you'll just have to, it'll be about a 10% increase in loading going into your treatment facility. Uh, so that's something to consider. And, uh, can, can you kind of elaborate just a little bit on how it could also help the town possibly um, be a little bit closer to our There is a, you are facing your limits being, becoming more strict on your discharge, on your permit uh, in 2021. So that's an unfunded need that you have right now. And we have provided a report to you that was filed with DEQ. It basically said the town's intention uh, was to make more improvements out there in order to meet those permit limits in 2021. Well, in the sense it would be a source of revenue to help that. Yeah. Because I made an additional load on the facility that you have to endure. Okay. So your recommendation is going to be in the field. Your recommendation is going to be working in the field. It's, uh, I, I think it's a uh, endeavor and engagement you could enter into if you want to. Let me remind you, uh, I'm looking at the minutes from uh, November 15, 2016. And back then, this board, my former mayor, voted to terminate all dumping of the Pelo Hatchet Lagoon by Gold Coast Commodities, and struck Brady Hair, obscure all chlorine cylinders, Pat Now, I know y'all have had some issues with branding. I've done some work for the EPA. Uh, and right now, I'm not going to fly as them to do anything with y'all until we saw better laid out. Until you saw which plan I'm talking about? I would need to see a lot to go out and ask for it. That's just all to respect. We've painfully tested every, these unfounded allegations that the mayor of the city of Brandon has poisoned a lot of my business. I understand. And I'm not saying they're true or not. I, I said I had several years of dealing with DEP and the EPA when I first started practicing law. And, and, and no one, this was terminated prior. I was not the attorney here, so I don't know what went on. It was terminated, and I knew that y'all do have issues with city of Brandon. So prior to them entering the contract, uh, they, when you, I would advise y'all to table this issue and take a long look at it. I'm sorry. I appreciate your camera. Yes, sir. Yeah. Excuse me. Do you have to do that? Yeah. All right. I would like to make one second. Yes, I will. Yeah. Uh, I'm not 100% certain of all the details surrounding any type of termination order um, and what the causes were. The agreement that was in place before with the city of Pelahatchee did not have a pre-trip permit cover. Now, there's, there's a, a threshold that you have to meet before an industry is required to obtain a pre-trip permit. Not all industries are. If they don't produce a certain level of waste load relative to the, the size of that treatment plant receiving that waste load, 
know, they may not need a pre-treatment permit. Regardless of the thresholds, uh, I think it's in Goldberg's best interest to apply for this permit through MDEQ so that they can get the approval of MDEQ and, by definition, the approval of EPA. EPA mandates or EPA delegates their authority over MPDES permitting to the Mississippi Department of Environmental Quality. So by their approval, you're getting the approval of DEQ and EPA to this discharge. And any issues with it, I would suggest be produced from any type of water sample or data showing that there's something incompatible with wastewater in, in Gold Coast wastewater that can't be treated by these lagoons. And in, in that case, we would need to address that. That's a serious issue that um, <coughs> Gold Coast and, and the city of Pelahatchee would take very seriously. Were anything to be produced showing that it's incompatible with this type of treatment? To date, I have seen no data showing that it's incompatible, and I've seen more than the adequate amount of sampling that would be required to show that it is completely capable, uh, capable of being treated with simple biological treatment in lagoons. So I'll just leave it with that, that, uh, that this permit offers the city, it offers the industry a certain level of protection uh, that you otherwise may not have. So that, that's the purpose of the permit. And if after they talk about it, are you guys prepared to produce monthly reports, monthly um, data reports? That would be required by the pre-treatment permit uh, and a, a condition of compliance. Yeah. So yes, we will. We, we. You were saying something about you know, turn in some paperwork to the EQ or That's somebody right. and they were reviewing it? Yes. And when are they supposed to be able to get out? So the way that process typically works is that uh, the industry would talk to municipality about uh, just entering into that type of agreement. And then they would go ahead and decide, okay, this is mutually beneficial for both parties. The industry would get all their information together, submit that application to the DEQ. DEQ would review it, ask the city for comment about what the limits would be or you know, what kind of permit conditions do you want to be in the permit. And then at that point, the city probably would have already met with the industry and they know what they, everybody has made an agreement. With, with this type of situation, it's been my understanding that uh, this board would like to see some review by DEQ prior to uh, entering into an agreement with, uh, with the Gold Coast. So in my opinion, We've gotten that level of approval. Uh, DEQ intends to write the city of Pilahatchee for comment on what you would like to see in the permit. And uh, it would be customary for you to, to talk to somebody like Hunter to see you know, what's in our best interest for what ought to be in this permit and get a recommendation from the city's consulting engineer. So you know, it's kind of a chicken and the egg process as far as DEQ approving. And, and I'll be honest, the, the city carries a lot of weight in approving a pre-treatment permit, even though DEQ would review it to make sure that everything is, is compatible, there's not any obvious problems. If at any time the city wishes to ever modify a pre-treatment permit, you're, you know, you're completely within your rights to do that.
with a letter which I sent to the mayor, uh, which is on Exhibit A. On the first page, I said you to terminate my contract for non-payment. Second page of that article is the actual pay schedule of what was paid, when was paid, what they received, and uh, as y'all can see, on the first payment they were paid in, in a 30-day time was within our contract documents. Second payment was paid within a 30-day time. The third payment started with a partial payment in November and a balance in, in February the 22nd. Uh, fourth payment was for September. It was paid in, uh, in November 11th. The fifth payment was paid was for October for no fit, I mean, I'm sorry, October 26th was paid February 22nd last week. Six payment has not been paid. We got partial payment on seven of $26,732. Eight has not been paid. The balance with you today is $364,438.11. And uh, I'm a small contractor. I don't have the money to finance the city of Tilahatchee. I'm no different than these great citizens right here. If they didn't pay their water bill, their light bill, or their gas bill, y'all would cut them off. And I sent this letter to the mayor via the email and registered mail on February the 20th. I still haven't got any response back, and I want to make sure that the board members understand where we at, what we're doing, and why we do it. And this is the termination of contract is under Article 9.7 of my AIA contract, which states I give y'all 10 day notice without for non payment, and then I can't quite walk away from my contract. When I walk away from my contract, you still owe me all the profit, all the overhead, and all my expenses out of the job. And you would have to go find someone else to build this. I've been doing this since 1983. I've never failed to complete a project in my life. I've never failed to build a project that I didn't have an owner to come back and say, I want you to build my next project. And this is a slap in the face for me. I'm not knowing why. I called, I was told to call me. Mima says, you, I do not have a contract with me. I have a contract with the city of Peter Hatchet. And you'll have until February the 7th to resolve this. Oh, I have the option option to terminate my contract. And I just I asked for a payment schedule. I've asked why. I don't know. I can't answer that question. Only y'all can answer that question. <coughs> and all the documentation, AI documents in the back page, tells what dates I was paid, what dates were certified, what dates it got to the city. And the architect with the last service certified all the council that you. What was the last payment you received for people pay? Was on the 22nd. Of February. Of February. And that payment was for, if you look at the back of it, that payment was for some bills that we turned in in August of last year. So typically you haven't really been compensated until the last past three weeks since August of last year. That's correct. Right. That's correct. Right. And then within the last two weeks you received uh, $194,000. And it was put to this payment, to that payment, and this payment. 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 I don't know where it went to. <laughs> I have no idea. But it's, it's documented in these papers. Everybody has them. Anybody wants a copy, I have plenty of copies for the for the public. You know, and I am pretty much, you know, to the point, I don't know what else to do. You know, I don't want to be here. I'd rather be at home with my grandkids. That is on my TV, my big fat boy chair. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be here, but I have to get paid. So yeah. contractors have to be paid. I've got equipment sitting over that, that not being used. Me, can I ask you a question? Sure. The 364, is that the total amount that's open to complete the entire project? No, ma'am. Okay, so this no, is just that, the amount. That takes me up to the day date, the January page. Okay. At the end of that, you look at the very bottom page of the last payment, and it's 190. $199,000, $199,000, $199,000, $199,000, $199,000, $199,000, $199,000, $199,000, $199,000, $199,000, $199,000, $199,000, $199,000, $199,000, $199,000, $199,000, $199,000, $199,000, $199,000, $199,000,
pay the three. So, in essence, he's telling me, you know, but I can finish I can finish the project in three to four weeks. I have the cabinet built. I have everybody ready to move in, but I cannot go back with my subcontractor will not go back. <laughs> Um, in light of this situation, I do understand Mr. Bernard's concern, and um, once I actually found out that he hadn't been paid since August, I kind of jumped on it and began to speak with me, and I do have record of those conversations as well, and I think I sent those to Brad as well as my attorney as well. They indicated um, that they did not receive council checks from the town as they should have, which the type of uh, contract with the previous mayor and, and the and I assume Lima, the contractor. Uh, you have to submit a council check in order to be compensated or reimbursed, and it should have been a smooth transition once the check is received, the money come back, and we continue to pay this contractor. So we shouldn't have a gap, but we have a gap. Um, again, we just paid in lieu of that situation and found out what's going on. We contacted Lima and we're on schedule right now, so we should receive another payment within a week and a half. Uh, they submitted another reimbursement. We also found out the check was not sent in. A council check was not, too, was not submitted to me. So in lieu of that, we've already submitted those council checks to be reimbursed for that. Um, and that's to, to finish out one of the contracts that we paid portion. I think a portion of it, which is a one hundred thirty-four thousand, I believe. We pay a portion of that. No, one hundred thirty-four. One thirty-four. No, we paid a portion. That twenty-six thousand seven hundred seventy-three dollars and seventy-nine cents was a portion of that hundred. I don't, I don't think portion work. I think full month work. I expect to pay for a full month work. I don't want. Yeah. I don't want to pay more than the certified that I've done. I'm not asking you for a loan. I'm asking you for. I didn't want to do. Are there any discussions with the board? In my understanding, and this, this was not your fault, not, but FEMA back in September, who Hurricane Harvey, put a hold on all payments. I had a contract for the hurricane company, I don't really care about it. Right. <laughs> that town could not submit a payment. FEMA would submit to FEMA and then be reimbursed. Well, it's my understanding that the city of FEMA has to pay me in 30 days, and FEMA reimburses that. Uh, according to my attorney. And I'm not an attorney, but I'm just a rich attorney. I'm saying if they, they could not submit payment to be reimbursed, so they could then have the money to pay you back, that's obviously the problem. Because cash flow coming from the people's hole. I, 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 I don't know if they lived in their hole. Uh, that was part of the problem. Not that they didn't want each other. I think they made it a year. I totally understand cash flow. I understand. But if I don't pay my subcontractor, they will not come back to finish that job. Should have probably been done was y'all got together and suspended the contract or suspended construction until the FEMA hold was, was lifted, um, and then you could have went back to work. The way I read the contract, I understand it. Uh, I mean, you're already what, over 200 days behind schedule. I believe the substantial completion date was in November, and so once another couple hundred days, you got suspended, suspended construction. Uh, well, when you suspend construction. Then you owe me for mobilization and remobilization. That may have been cheaper than where we're sitting right now. Probably right. <laughs> so, I just want to clarify, it was not the town's fault initially not what you paid. No, no, it's not that no matter what they pay. I think the FEMA, when they put a hold on that, it just created a steam off of that problem. What is the, what is the uh, city plan to do from here for the wrong guy. Yeah, well, Mr. Bernard, the city plan is going to get you paid. Again, you've already submitted several um, requests and just waiting on reimbursement from Lima, which will be here, like I said, another week, and then we'll call you so you can pick up your next check. Um, yeah. I do hate the fact that you suspended the job, but I do also understand your disposition um, as far as it's going. You've got three days left. All you got to do is yeah. check. I'll be back <laughs> next morning. And, um, I have not suspended it. I'm putting you on notice that I'm going to do the job if I'm not paying. Okay, that's fine. I mean, let's just plan it up. I, I like to go over and get through and get out. 
All my money is tied up in that last few months. All the things. Any profit I got, I don't make any money from that here. I just try to pay it. Any profit I got in that small job is in that $200,000 thing. <laughs> what did they do? What did they do? We're pretty much on track now. Well, once I had the meeting, that's when I'm telling him, we've already submitted three checks to them and waiting on reimbursement, which will be here next week. I said, but, I mean, we don't have a $364,000 check to give you today. We don't have that. But I mean, uh, right, and I did make a meeting, and like I said, people have just now back on track with them in lieu of the uh, situation. Wait, so you get people to give me a pay schedule? Well, what yeah, pay they actually, pay the money he, yeah, I sure can. He actually yeah, was supposed to be here. here. Right? He's on the board. He know, he know the agenda, is he here? No, he's not, that's what that's I was trying right. to tell you. He um scheduled, but due to the weather forecast for tonight, he said that that's why well, I, I the story. But yeah. he said that he would definitely would like to meet with the contractors and the board. So that's fine. So we can get back with you, but you should have a meeting within a week and a half from now. And after that then maybe we can revisit the situation. we can have one man. You got you got the next uh, the Sabbath on Thursday. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bernard. Uh, next on the agenda, old business. Discuss issues of vote on hiring temporary workers in the municipal clerk's office.
the architecture review committee asked him to paint it the same image which we do have. He agreed to do that. Yeah, it's going to be a uh, portable building brought in 16 or 28 and brought in. No, and he'll bring it in. And he'll sit right back right there. I measure his property. He's right. got a brand new. Is this behind the church? It's behind yeah. the church. That's mm -hmm. good. Any other questions? Do I hear a motion that we accept this? Uh, Granted uh, permission. Uh, motion to accept. Uh, it's an emotion that's taken to uh, allow Great Works Outreach Ministry to include the back part of the church. It is. Okay. All in favor? Any uh, uh, opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carried. Thank you. Decision to make. 
And I'm tired of being getting emails and being accused of denying people access.
that omega protein is like a vice mate. So they have a vice president. And they serve until they step down or, or, or they uh, their term ends. The argument to say that there was no proper notice or that she's not omega protein uh, is ridiculous. I drafted the notice. She is the mayor pro tem. She's also a reporter. She could sign either way. Okay? She could sign under both. The more important thing was she signed the notice, otherwise she had to be served. And the more important part was that she did not uh, serve with the special meeting on the 17th. The mayor did. Okay? So no laws have been broken. Nothing's been done wrong. Any, uh, All these emails that I'm getting, the fact that you put it on the, the, uh, the agenda tonight is just one more way to say we're doing things wrong and illegal and causing fuss and a grip that don't need to be there. Yes? We didn't do anything wrong. She is the mayor of Rovin. What was your reason on this today? Because I want to address the fact that we've because he's been sending me emails about it. And it's a legal issue. And I just wrote this law. So why did you bring the statute for that one? But you didn't bring the statute for the one before. But you didn't bring it. You said you didn't have it. Address and discuss the salary reduction of the mayor and board. We skipped that one. We didn't even have to do that. We didn't 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 have to Specifically authorizes the Mayor Board of Albany to appoint municipal officers and employees and to prescribe previous duties and fixed compensation for all such officers and employees. That's one of the last board to do is government authority. There's also numerous AG's opinions, and I've included them in packets before if you would read them, that says that the board gets the fixed compensation. There's even an AG's opinion that was upheld when it was challenged that they cut a mayor's salary to $1. Okay? Now they got all their own salaries too. And I think it's a noble thing they cut their own salaries. And I didn't have an opinion there about who's going to sell it. It should be considered noble if it was cut in all the same percentage. That's noble. So that is not, it's not noble if it's not cut. They cut their opinion. They cut their mind. That's not noble. But that's not noble. And you're in here and ask and ask, and ask the county, like you're, you're, you're okay in this type of activity. And you're not even in the same. But no, you don't have a vote, but you know, but you know that the board, for a fact, you know that. The, excuse me, excuse me, but I'm speaking. You know that the board up here is everything that you say, and we know that because you sent me a text message indicating that. Would you like for me to bring that and show it to them? Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and tell them exactly what you said on the text message that you sent to me. Pretty, pretty much, pretty, pretty much. And of course, I went after you sent me that message, and it is. That was sitting in my position will go too. Because you don't send a, a mayor what you sent me via text message. That was very unprofessional. So, uh, he pretty much said that he and the boy was going to run the town. So that's why I also have another attorney. The next thing on the agenda is address and discuss the mayor's attorney questions and comments. We skipped one. We skipped one. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, let's back up to number seven. Address and discuss the statute, uh, the status of update of Mississippi Office of State Office's investigation into misappropriation and wrongdoing by the current and formal field at the elected officials and city employees. Uh, it's worded that way because, yes, I put it. It was also worded that way on the February 5th meeting. Let okay, me read that again. Investigation into misappropriation and wrongdoing by current and former field at the elected officials and city employees. That is offensive. Uh, I've seen nothing that anyone has done wrong. Let's talk about forfeiture investigation. I have spent countless hours reviewing it. I've had other lawyers look at it. I've had a CPA uh, look at it. We can find nothing there. Every dollar is accounted for. Every dollar went into this town and for uh, the right purpose. We've not heard back from the investigator, uh, auditor's office. We've not, uh, they've not come back and said anybody's done anything wrong. And it's offensive to write it that way, accusing people of misappropriating and using money. Because I can tell you, I've looked at it, and, I've, and I've got, uh, I'm qualified to be the legal opinion, and I don't see it. But if they do come back with something, we're going to defend the town, we're going to defend these people up here, because uh, there is nothing that I can find that's done wrong. This gets, gets, you keep putting it on the agenda, just like you did last night, and putting me on the spot, I want me to give an update. I, the auditor's office doesn't call me every week to tell me whether they're on the investigation. 
I don't know. But I could have put it out here and keep bringing it up. He's fixed. No, put it out here and keep bringing it up. It's to let the people know what's going on. To let them know. To let the people know what's going on. That's all they're trying to address that discuss the mayor's attorney questions and comments. Yeah, absolutely. Miss Bell, I'll hand it to you a six and a six, lady. You have been you have been involved yourself and interfering with town business for a month. I have I have bit my lip and bored it. You are not the town attorney, you are a private attorney deal with the mayor's private business. I think it is so far improper and out of bounds for you to be involved in the town business. I don't even know where to start. Uh, you, you sent me a letter going to file suit on me. Uh, I'm not scared of the You know that. Okay? Uh, and what really got me tonight was we look at the agenda and number eight on the mayor's business says mayor's attorney's question and comment. You are a visitor who could speak during the visitor section earlier. You could have got up and said some stuff. This board will not be answering any questions you ask. Not now, not ever. I was going to share the president of my Bible. Not right now. Not now, not ever. Do not do not address them. Do not address them. I don't want to get another email from you or a letter. I don't smoke signals.
got this in May. The one thousand two thirty nine. Right.